On today's show, we'll be asking what exactly do you get for your money? And crucially, is it suitable for the purpose you have in mind? We're gonna be bringing you all the latest e-bike news from around the world in today's show. Now, if you were in the Monaco area last week, you might well have seen our colleague on GCN, Dan Lloyd, descending off that famous, well, infamous peak, the Col de la Madone. At the same time, you might have seen me struggling in the snowy conditions high above that very famous F1 town. Chris, I see you are out in the snow as well. Yeah, we've been struck with a lot of snow here in England. We had about eight inches back home, which is pretty unheard of. So I went out and about on the e-bike, shredding it around, it was really, really good fun. But I also saw you were in the skate park as well. Of course we are in the skate park, yeah. I don't see e-bikes and skate parks mixing it somehow. I don't see you in a skate park, Steve. I was once, yeah. But I guess good skills, right? Yeah, no, it's all good. It all translates over to the trail. But on today's show, we're mm. going to be talking about uh, do you get more bang for your buck? How much money do you actually have to spend on an e-bike? And is it suitable for purpose? So let's kick things off. I think around £500 is a minimum amount of money you can spend to get into the e-bike game, right? Yeah, well, we actually spent £350 on this Cyclomatic off the internet. Mm -hmm. It's a hub drive bike. It only comes in one size. But when you're riding fire roads, it's a really capable mountain bike. However, when you take it into a serious off-road environment, it simply is not built for purpose and it'll get you into some sticky spots, I think. Yeah, Which sure. takes us on to a higher price point. If you spend up to a thousand pound, you get this Decathlon Rock Rider. Mm -hmm. What you get here is much more uh, suitable componentry and of course sizing. You get, you know, you get four different sizes, which is really important when you buy in a mountain bike. And uh, again, it's a hub drive bike, so it's a bit limited when you come to super steep hills. Uh, but when you get into this price point, you, we look at this bike here, which is the Carrera. Taking that next step up again, so getting you more towards that more capable mountain bike. It's got better brakes, better suspension, yeah. a bit more design to hit those trails yeah. rather than just to commute to work or the forest trails and things. So I think that covers the budget end of e-bikes. They're primarily hub drive bikes. Now, we did a feature recently, which was cheap bike versus super bike. And I think this comment comes in from Ken Peters sums it up pretty well, actually. Yeah, we've had this in uh, from Ken. Many people are not interested in actual off-road mountain biking, but just want to use their e-bikes for a fun trip into the park or forest, and some for commuting to work. For these purposes, the budget bike seems perfect. Tighten the battery, change the tires, and fix the brakes, and you're off. Personally, I have the giant Fathom E plus three, and that costs approximately £2,000 and you get an amazing bike that can easily be categorised as a super bike. Yeah, and I think the key point here though is that Ken has now gone from a hub drive bike mm -hmm to a mid-drive bike. Now, mid-drive bikes are far more capable when it comes to serious off-road terrain, especially the hill climbs. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at a bike for less than 2,000 pounds, I think the high bike is a good uh, a good bike, Chris, right? Yeah, yeah, got the uh, high bike Estero Hard 7. You're just tipping over that edge, as Steve says, to the mid-drive bike, Yamaha motor, proper suspension, hydraulic disc brakes, and that is that slight err uh, towards that more capable off-road exactly. bike. It's uh, capable of doing all the commuting and the road work smooth trails. Exactly. You hit it's, the trails. It's still, it's, it's crucially, it's still a hard drive, but it has that mid-drive motor. Mm -hmm. So if you take things up to two and a half thousand pounds, now in the same way as we discussed the difference, differences between the budget bikes earlier, when you get between 550 and it's all about the componentry, mm -hmm. good componentry, bad componentry. I think it's the same when you've got hardtails around the 2000 pound mark, because you've got this a specialized Levo here, which is also a mid-drive bike. There's a great range of sizes involved. So uh, yeah, two really good options around the 2,000 pound mark. Okay, so this is where things get really interesting. This is the price bracket from 2,000 to 3,000 pounds. This is where we're dipping our toes in a proper off-road style e-bike, right? Yeah, I think you're dead right there, Chris. Mm -hmm. It's where you go off the beaten track. This is where we go from hardtail to full suspension. And a full suspension bike is far more capable in an off-road situation than a hardtail. It gives you more comfort and it gives you more grip. Now, a great bike uh, up to 3,000 pounds is the high bike S0 full 7 4.0. Great geometry, great componentry, mm -hmm. and of course that mid-drive motor. Yeah. And then when you move up to the uh, up to 4,000 price point, the Canyon Spectral On, uh, this is the 6.0. Mm -hmm. Now this is a seriously good off-road bike, right, yeah. Chris? Yeah, it shares all the same technology as the whole of the Spectral On range. Mm. So you're getting a mid price point bike, but that whole technology is spread across that yeah. bike at a good price point. Yeah, and again, it's like, like we talked about earlier, when you go from 4,000 to say 
up to 5,000, um, like the bike, you know, the bikes we ride, uh, the Canyon bikes we ride here on EMBN, mm -hmm. is the Spectral 8.0. All you're doing is you're getting different componentry. For example, our bikes compared to the uh, 6.0, we've got better wheels, we've got a better drivetrain on mm -hmm. the bike, and of course, like a better seat drop, right? So it's, yeah. just, it's just about the fine details, really, yeah, right? It's simply those things that you probably upgrade as you go along from the cheaper model up to the expensive model, but it's already done for you, really. Yeah. So yeah. That's where that money goes. The next step up, is obviously five thousand pounds plus, and what do you get for that, Steve? <laughs> well, sky's the limit, mm -hmm. right? Well, the sky is no limit. I mean, you've got the new high bike fly on, yeah, which is insane. It's got a hundred and twenty newton meter torque motor. Mm -hmm. It's got lights on it. Yeah. Or you could choose maybe you know the specialized S Works turbo lever. It's got a seven hundred and four watt hour battery. Massive it's range. carbon fiber. Yep. It's got a huge range in it, and mm -hmm. um, it's lightweight. You know, it's sub twenty kilos. So yep. the, again, it's the fine detail and the componentry and the frame that gives you that money. So that technology as well, isn't it? All Bluetooth compatible. You can link it up to your phone, get all the data from it, rides, all that data. You know, yep. all comes at a price. Yeah. So there you go. There's a, a, a full breakdown there of all the different pri price points from. Five 500, or should I say 350, up to £9,999. I think there's something in there for everybody, mm -hmm. but the key thing is you need to identify the type of terrain that you ride and make sure the bike you get is suitable for that type of terrain. There's no point in buying a £500 budget bike and thinking you're going to go into the wilderness of Scotland because it simply will not hold up. The same, same token, if you buy a 10,000 bike, yes, it can go and do the fire roads, but maybe you're overkill. Maybe you're underusing it. Mm -hmm. Or Ovico, yeah. It's nice to yeah. use it, right, Chris? Exactly, yeah. It's nice to have. It'd be nice to have a bike that does everything, but there definitely is a price point for everyone out there to get into buying an e-bike. Uh, Nikolai E-Box. Mm -hmm. Nik Nikolai have come out with a, well, it's been in the works for a while, hasn't it? It's got a roll-off rear hub, belt drive, mm -hmm. um, looks really interesting. Those guys at Nikolai know their stuff, so definitely going to be big leaps forward in progression of e-bike technology with that. Looks a really interesting ride. So some big news coming in from Sam Demas out in California from the Foes factory. Their e-bike is about ready to be launched. Wow. And it's available in a frame only as well. So really excited, you know, we've talked about that a lot on the show. Uh, manufacturers making just a frame only that you can stick your own stuff on, but mm -hmm. comes with a Shimano steps motor on there. So this is custom made for a Shimano motor mm -hmm. though, right? Yeah, I think that's the key thing. Yeah, yeah, it's available in, I think they're messing around with different wheel sizes, different bottom bracket heights at the mm. moment, so it's really in its final production phases, but yeah, big news. Do you know, out. I find that really exciting mm. because Foes is a brand that's synonymous with, you know, big hitting downhill bikes, yep. like the Foes DH Mono oh, with yeah, a Kerner shock. Well, yeah. Shock was like this on it. It's huge, wasn't it? Didn't you have uh, F1 forks as yeah, well, Foes forks? Foes F1 forks, sounded like you are having an asthma attack coming down the hill, puffing away. But those days are gone. Yeah. Foes now has an e-bike in the offering. I yeah. cannot wait to yeah, I'm have a look at that. that one. Let's get into some reality, some facts here. Mm -hmm. Now, I saw that Michelin have got an e-bike specific tire, yeah. right? Yeah, that's coming out called the Wild E. Dottie spotted a few of those up at the Core Bike Show. Yeah, uh, looks really interesting. They've got different compounds, um, big aggressive front tire, and a nice uh, sort of less aggressive rear tire. So it's not taking that range out of the battery, but you're mm. also providing that drive and grip. Interesting, because I was with the ten-time world downhill champion Nico Vulios mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago, and he had Michelin mm -hmm. tires but he had downhill casing tires on his bike and he's running right. about like, he must have been on like 18 PSI in them, but right. you should have seen the speed he was going. Oh imagine. my God. Chris, did you see Sam Hill's Instagram post a few days ago about Killian Braun riding down that damn face? I didn't, but I just saw it now on the screen and I can imagine seeing you riding up there, Steve, actually. I, can't, I don't think so, but 60 degrees. But I like the fact that people are giving us inspiration for our next hill climb challenge. Definitely, it does look good fun. Other news, there's a new national race series out in the States kicking off where you can get a national title, actually. It's um, GNCC racing, loads of different venues. But yeah, national title up for grabs. Yeah, and closer to home down here in Bristol, on the southwest of England. Uh, the Bristol Bike Fest has got an e-bike specific category at this year's festival. So if you wanna go and drink a lot of cider and ride your e-bikes, that is the place to go. Uh, I did actually see this piece from Jesse Melamed on his Rocky Mountain power play. Seriously, seriously good trial skills here in a rock garden going up and also going back down, right? Yeah, it looks pretty tech coming back down as I well. I mean, when we talk about who rides e-bikes, there you go. Some pro riders uh, inspiring lots of people with their skills. Welcome to a super snowy edition of Electrics. It's pretty rare that we get a lot of snow here in the UK, but taking your e-bike out in the snow is a load of fun. And today I'm gonna to be showing you just how to do that.
Bike setup for riding in the snow, you just want to lower your tyres a little bit, just gives that a little bit more grip, a bit more predictability, especially on those square edges that you sometimes encounter if it's frosty out there. Power mode, I'm just sticking it in a medium power mode, sometimes going up into turbo if I need it for that deeper snow. Also, when you ride in, don't forget if you are a clipless pedal user, I'd stick a set of flats on if you're going to attempt to ride in the snow because it makes it a lot easier when you want to stick your foot out or things start getting a bit slidey and a bit rowdy. So one of the hardest things that I find in the snow is actually setting off, getting that momentum going, getting a good line. So I suggest dropping the seat, getting a medium power mode, medium gear, and just injecting a bit of speed, a bit more harder than you'd normally accelerate, just to get that bike moving, get the momentum in the wheels, and it should soon settle down. That. Don't go riding on any of those trails that you don't really know, because there's a lot of things will catch you out on the snow. But it's all about staying relaxed, keeping that upper body. You want it stiff, like in the upper body, but loose in the arms. Let the bike slide if it needs to slide. Just look and focus on your line. Deep snow here, you can see that's really deep. But the e-bike is managing it, no problems whatsoever. So there you go, really good fun riding on snow on your e-bike. Just a few things to remember. Momentum is key. Keep that power on, just try and keep that bike going in a straight line. Keep the body, upper body stiff but relaxed in the arms. Just expect that front wheel to slide around. Keep a good gear, keep that motor spinning, keep that forward momentum and riding in the snow. It's one of the best things you can do on your e-bike. Right, well, it's this time of the week again where we talk about ghetto tech. I don't know about you, Steve, but when I get back from my e-bike ride, when it's all covered in mud, I find them a nightmare to wash, you know, trying to clean the drivetrain and things like that, getting them up in the air. But Josh has come up with a really neat solution here. He's made his own e-bike stand. It's looking pretty good, actually. Just Chris, one question. Yeah. Is it 3B2 or 4B2? 4B2. By 4B2. Right. We're going to need something pretty substantial to hold uh, the weight of that e-bike You can't see the side. Uh, Josh, I want to see the side-on shot. So mm -hmm. I'm licking it. It's like one of those hangman's thing with a strut on it, right? Yeah, I think so. Just wedging saying? the saddle up. But yeah, it looks really good where washing the e-bike, cleaning the drivetrain. Chris, I've got to say, great job on the Hands Ray Trials Cheers. video. That was good fun, that one. It's nice to see you pulling it back a little bit from yeah. the one we did. Uh, this in from Scott. Well, yeah. Hands is twice your age, Chris, so even more impressive how close it was. Fun challenge. Well, I know Hands is getting on a bit, but I'm 37, so I don't think he's, what's my math, 72? Is he? Not quite 74. yet. 74. No. But yeah, Hands did an amazing job. You need, to work, really, you need to work on your maths as really, well as your trials. <laughs> <laughs> really amazing rider and it's super you know impressive to see what he's capable of still and he would have probably shut me down if it was a pure trials it doesn't, session. It doesn't stop there. Legendary no. game of E by Chris, but didn't you feel guilty beating him? Not even one little bit. I did actually. Hans is a big hero of mine. I used to watch him as a kid growing up, so it was really, you know, it's really cool to play a game of e-bike with him. And yeah, I did feel guilty. But it was really close, so I'm not that guilty. I had to win one. Can't be beaten by all these old guys, can I Steve? No, absolutely not. And on to the Electric Mountain video, which we did. This is mm -hmm. from Chris Edwards. Yeah, we had this in quality video, guys. Love how how you blended education and information with an epic fun ride. Love visits to Wales, and it's great to learn about regions like this. Well, it's nice to see someone uh, enjoying the education there, because Chris wasn't interested in one little bit. Just want to ride, don't I? Uh, this in from Scott, and definitely our favorite kind of ride to take together. Challenging aspects of trail with some beautiful scenery, rich history to learn about. Felt, look, felt a little like we rode it with you. Great vid. Oh, that's very kind, Scott. That's nice what we'd like to do is share the ride and you know give you a little bit of information and a bit of epic riding. So we've yeah. got more coming in the next few weeks. So as our globe spins ever more out of control towards the spring equinox, what have we got this week, Chris? Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to find this one, Steve. It's in a place called the Forest of Dean. Yeah, what is it? You know it? where that one is? We've yeah, got yeah. Talk, this... Talking it out of control. Carry on. We said, got this one sent in from John. Looks like he's trying to do a Bernard Kerr stoppy Sunday. He's actually yeah. uh, out on his new Levo and it's given Ooh, him a lot of confidence. Crikey. But oh, some good technique there, Steve. What do you think on that? Uh, Chris, you're the technique man. I'll leave that comment Thanks. down to you. I don't want yeah, to fall out with anybody in my local woods. <laughs> but yeah, good to see you jumping that, John. Um, we want know, to see more of these. Definitely. We, we got this one in from Dublin as well, Steve. Right, Dublin. Dublin. I can find Dublin. Yeah. yeah we got this in from Sean. Sean absolutely sending it on his Merida E900 as yeah, well. Yeah. Having a lot of fun, a couple of big jumps as well, going pretty big on that. Oh, fair dues. Reader and FOD. Nice. 
Chris, what have we got coming up on the channel this week? Well, on Friday, we got getting the most out of your seat post dropper when you're hitting the trails. Probably a, the most overlooked item on your e-bike, but a really important one to get right. Absolutely. Then Sunday, we've got an incredible video with the double world downhill champion, Fabian Burrell. It's a multifaceted ride mm -hmm. in the 06 department of Alp Maritime area in the south of France. Wow, amazing, amazing that. terrain good. and skills by the by Fabian oh, there. I can imagine. I'll tell you what, Chris, I've been using my EMBN jacket and hat I this have. week, been freezing. Definitely, that EMBN cover's come in super helpful. Don't forget stuff. the shop to check out all the kit. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff in there from t-shirts, hoodies, hats. Puffer jackets, yeah. loads of cool kit in there. It's yeah. a really good way of supporting the channel, so don't forget to check out the EMBN shop. Yeah, get shopping, guys. It's bike fault time. Let's get into it. We've got this one in from Werner, Giant E-Trans SX Pro from St. Francis, South Africa. Yeah. Come on, easy, super nice, boom. Got this one in from Jadon as well. Oh, Jadon. Jadon, yep. Trek Powerflight LT, and it's a 2019 model from Brisbane, Australia. Mm, it's nice, I wouldn't put danger in the background. Military firing range. Oh right, well maybe. But Chris, nice flowers. Look at that southern hemisphere for summer. I'm saying a nice for that one. It's nice. Moving on. This is from Stephen in uh, Uffington Whitehorse, Oxfordshire. Uh, Bracer bikes on the Ridgeway. Focus Jam 2 factory, looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. And a Specialized in the background there. Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking, Steve? Yeah, I'm leaning towards... Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Moving on, we've got Evan here with Pivot Shuttle 2019 on a demo out in the McDowell Mountains. Scottsdale, yeah. Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, I like, I like a bit of Arizona action. Hell of a bike. Mm, I'd love I want a good Arizona. Super nice. Place. Whoop, there you go. Woo! This one here from David. Um, he's on his high bike Enduro 8.5 and I a 2019 Kineva. Idaho. You can ride two bikes at once. That I didn't backdrop. think it was, of course Idaho's inland, isn't mm -hmm. it? Look how cold it is there. Icy creek bed, look at the icicles and stuff. It's nice to see, it's nice to see other people suffering. So I'm thinking that has got to be super nice. Super nice. Super ice. Mm. Andy here was 2019 Specialized Turbo Over. 29er. What is Candover? I've no idea actually. But it looks pretty good. Can't I'd quite like see the to bike. see the bike, yeah. Andy. Not quite a good angle on it, but it looks like a hell of a trail and a really good ride. But it looks like a farm track to me. Let's oh. go. Nice. Nice. Moving on, we've got Mate here on his giant track. That is quite unusual. E1 Pro from Where Slovenia. Is it? That is quite unusual. Aptly named Cold Mountain, and it looks bloody cold there. And Look I at the, think uh, fair dues uh, on you, Matej, for Mate, Matej, sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, fair, take my hat off to him, super I'm, nice. Sorry. Super ice. Super ice, <laughs> definitely again. Got these ones here from <laughs> Mud Plugin from Peter and his Cube Stereo Hybrid 120. Peter, you are a man after my own heart. This to me is, I love riding in mud. He's at a lot of motocross track, and if you look around I'm the I'm not into the motocross road, tracks, but I love riding in mud. does look super deep mud. Mm -hmm. Is that um, the place to take your e-bike? Probably not to the transmission, right? Grinding, I think we were replacing chains, I don't brake think pads. I love mud, but I don't think we should be encouraging, should we? Should we? No. What are we gonna say? I think we should be encouraging mud, but I don't know about motocross tracks. Okay, right, so that's a nice. Nice. Okay. And that's it, out of the bike bolt. Out of the bike bolt. <laughs> bike bolt. <laughs> but keep those bikes coming in. We love seeing all your e-bikes here on EMBN. Just use our upload service, all the details on how to get your bikes on the bike vault or in the details in the description below on the video. Yeah, but you know what? We want to know your comments on the on the, on the the price points of e-bikes. We had a load of feedback on cheap bike versus super bike, and we really want to know your thoughts on this and where you think you should be riding these bikes. But please leave your comments down below on that subject. And add into the comments as well. If you've got any questions you want to ask us here at EAMBN, just hashtag AskEAMBN, drop them in the comments box below and we'll get back to you on next week's show or soon. Um, if you've enjoyed today's show, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to EAMBN by clicking the globe in the middle of the screen. We've got loads of cool videos on here, everything to do with e-bikes. See you next week.